code. So that box jumps up on your screen, click the word got it, it'll disappear and then you're ready to go. And again, we always start our practice uh, sort of in a similar way. <clears throat> So inside of each of these little, you could say modules, little events that happen, uh, each of these can be done by themselves as your little snack size practice. So firstly, it's scoot to the front edge of your chair, feet planted on the earth, hands resting comfortably. They could be on your thighs or wrapped, sort of scooped like this, a traditional uh, meditation position. And then we work on just the most basic practice of meditation. Eyes closed, let your chin come slightly down, crown slightly up, which again, can seem like we're not doing much, but if you understand how to work with Jong Jung or central upright, like you're really trying to calibrate and oscillate, I don't even know if that's the right word, but whatever words that you can think of that help you sort of calibrate and align and bring everything into this really wonderful connected state. And so there's a mindfulness that's required for that because usually we've got some, some asymmetry going on in the body. We've got some areas that are disconnected or sort of blacked out. We don't have awareness there. We've got other areas that are in a state of grip and tension. So we wanna first just sit, send our perception, our awareness through the body and scan what is going on. And if that's all you did as your regular practice a couple different times throughout your day, you would benefit from that. Just stopping, Finding your Jong Jong or your central upright. And then you can add on top of that breathing in through the nose, nice, long, and full. Out through the nose or the mouth, all the way to empty. Noticing that when you give breath a little bit extra attention, and an extra emphasis, you start to create this important movement in the body, this expansion. So on your next inhale, explore what is the fullest, the most full you could get to on this inhale. Hold it there for a little bit and feel how that's like a stretch of sorts opening you up. And then when you exhale, feel it like a melting, a releasing, and allowing to just drain out of you anything that you were holding on to, anything you were gripping. And then you hold empty for a little bit. And then when it's time, you inhale again, nice, long, and full. Once you get to that full state expansion, you hold. This also is saturating the system in chi and oxygen. Exhale when you're ready melting it out, and maybe even at the bottom, pushing the breath out a little bit, squeezing the tissue of the body in, holding empty. And then when it's time, you relax and open the valves and pull the breath in, hold it full, saturate the system. That's like a feasting, feasting. <clears throat> and then when it's time, you exhale, at the bottom of that exhale, fasting, doing without oxygen for a moment is good for us. Starving the body just a bit. So let's do that five more breath cycles, the four part breath.
And just remember that this could easily be your whole practice in a day that you do a couple different times whenever you're starting to feel off. You just find a seat, get your alignment, calibrate, and just focus on the breath. Even if you've got a lot of dyskinesia and sort of wiggling, waggling in the body, you can find a seat and just breathe and see if you could eventually master from the brain, master the ability of telling the nervous system to downregulate and become still, become open and through and flow. Right? And that mastery can be a tool that you can bring with you when you're walking and moving. So that's what we're doing here. This skill of relaxing and downregulating, and then we add that, uh, we add movement on top of that. So our first movement, hands on your thighs, slide hands back, elbows back, and shoulder blades squeeze back like you're cracking a walnut. Lift your chest and chin and look up to the ceiling. So we get all the way into the arch position. Slide your hands forward now, past your knees. The chest hollows back and the head drops so that the whole back side of your body opens. Then again, slide hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, look up, arch. And then slide the hands forward, rounding the back, creating that sort of turtle shell roundness on your back. Drop the head. Two more. Hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, look up. Hands forward, drop the head, round. All 24 vertebra getting a little bit of movement, shoulder blades, arm bones head and neck, as well as the pelvis tipping and tilting on the chair. And settle to the middle. Now rotation, left hand slide forward, right hand and elbow slide back, turn to the right, and then switch. Turn all the way across and around and look to the left. And then switch again, turn. Emphasize softness. Emphasize this idea of relaxing. Relaxing while keeping the integrity of the body. So we're not relaxing and slouching. We're relaxing and in fact, plumping or opening up so that our movement slides easily. That's what Tai Chi is focused on, is the dissolving of extraneous tension, which acts, which acts like an obstacle to our free movement. So it's like we have our own hurdles and obstacles in the body that now we're removing those. We're dissolving those. Come back to middle. Arms hang by your sides, loose and soft. Just lean to the right. Left wrist floats up right in close to the armpit, almost like you're going to tickle your own armpit, and lean. Keep the hand loose as can be, like a ripe piece of fruit. And lean. So again, the lifting wrist and the lower wrist are just loose, really loose. And switch again. So this is my favorite one, or it's really the first one in the flow. So, uh, Carolyn, notice how you're here and I'm here. Elbow higher, wrist low, yeah, there. So let that lift, that lifts this whole side of you there, like that. Yeah, okay, I'll try. My, lip, my wrists are extremely stiff, they both, yeah. That's good. Well, it's more, it's more about the, like even if you only got to here or even here, you just wanna mm -hmm. lift this particular path rather yeah, okay. than bend your hand and bring it up like that. So the point is, even if I did it really small, this could be my whole movement. I'm moving from my central pivot, right? And I'm shifting buttock to buttock. But eventually we can play with really leaning and flirting with disaster on one side and then flirting with disaster on the other side and feeling this middle pivot and back to middle. All right. Now, just got to keep everyone muted. Otherwise, it throws off the screen. All right. 
And, okay, shoulder circles. So the point here is chest, upper back. This whole sort of upper region tends to be where a lot gets stuck. So shoulders forward, up, back, down. Forward, up, back, down. Forward, up, back, down. Forward, up, back, down. Two more. Removing unconscious grip and hold. And last one. And let's reverse. Back, up, forward, down. Back, up, forward, down. Three more. Back, up, forward. And make sure you go down in a relaxed manner because the main goal of all our movement practices is to remove the extraneous and return to comfortable, natural, easy, relaxed, smooth, unhindered. So always releasing. Now bend the elbows, hands come up, elbows go out and up, 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 and then down. And then around in front and squeeze and down. Out, around and up, down. Squeeze, down, out and up, down, one more, squeeze, and then elbows back, open this front chest area, then elbows down, forward, up, as much up as you can, but try not to go out to the side. Keep your elbows in close and up to whatever degree you can. And notice the hands go down as the elbows go up. And then elbows forward, down, back, down, forward, up. Once more, forward, down, back. Down, forward, up. And elbows down. And last one here, elbows out, palms facing floor, one above, one below. Close the front, hug your own body. And then elbows out, switch. Hug your own body. Elbows out, switch. Hug. Out, switch, and then arms down and release. Loose. Now swing the arms. Easy and relaxed, and then let them come to stillness. And then one forward, one back. So this is kind of like when you're walking, if you're walking across the room, you want loose shoulder. Sometimes when people walk, they do it from the elbow and they keep the tension here. You might notice you do this next time you're walking, but know that over time you want it this from this joint here, this loose, free movement. And then your middle pivot is what you're really moving from, right? When we're walking or running even, right? And down, okay. Scoot back a little bit. So you're very stable on the chair. Let's just warm up the legs, then we'll get standing and working. So bring the knee up, the heel in, load, push, reload, and set the foot down. Other leg, load, push, reload, down, switch. Down, load, push, load, down, push, load, down, push, down, push, 
And one more. Now, right leg straight, point foot, flex foot. Point foot, flex. And invert, a little tilt in, tilt out. Tilt in, out, in, out. And circle, circle. Circle the other way, circle. And switch feet, left leg out, point and flex. Do that a few times. I'll let somebody in here. And then invert, evert, little tilt, 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 tilt. And circle, pick a direction. Circle about four or five times and reverse. And now, scoot forward on your chair. Our abbreviated swivel movement, step a little wider than hip distance. Lift your toes off the ground so the heels are touching and then turn the knees and toes in. That's internal rotation. Feel your quad or your groin area closing. Then lift your toes open. Now feel that quad area opening. Close, open, close, open. Notice the pelvis and spine and torso just kind of hang out there. They're, they're still, they're relaxed. And the freedom of movement of the legs can feel like it doesn't impact in a negative way or kind of throw you off. You want this to feel very loose and free and almost separate, these leg rotations. Back to neutral, bring your legs back to hip distance. And now the legs stay still, the pelvis. Hold, then sit up from the pelvis, then lean a little bit back from the pelvis and sit up. So now we're feeling the freedom from the other end. So the legs are essentially just sitting there and our hips are free, separate from our legs rather than glued together, which is what's happening a lot of times when the body is tight, stiff, stuck. All right, back to upright. Now, slide your feet back a little bit. So we have a less than 90 degree angle. Arms are loose and hanging. We just took some time to loosen those up so that the upper body isn't full of tension. We want the upper body empty, empty and light. And so now as you fold, let the body weight pour through the legs down to the earth and stand up and stay very light, very loose in the upper body. Let yourself feel heavy down through the feet to the floor. Let that happen. Keep that grounded quality, stick your butt back and sink your butt down, find the chair with your butt and then sit vertical. Again, fold. Weight goes into the legs, standing up. Stay very relaxed in your upper body. Butt back, sink, and sit back. And again. One more. Just see how relaxed can you remain through the whole movement. Now, squats. Don't sit in your chair, but basically do the same thing. Sit the butt, come back up. So we're not trying to make this into work. We're trying to see if we can relax. Relax through the movement. Especially, I mean, really everybody should learn this, but what I've noticed with my work with Parkinson's folks is that you guys have to master the softening through movement thing because otherwise everything gets all agitated and blocks, right? So just soft, loose. And let's see if you can just do everything that's on our menu today 
with softness, with ease, okay? Now we're standing, move over towards the right side chair. So it's there if you need it, but let's not use it for a moment. And if you moved your chair, there's no need for you to move your chair out of the way, right? Because you may need to sit down on your chair. So make sure you have something you can sit on if you have any problem you need to sit down. Now let's, again, you got the chair there for safety. Let yourself tip into your toes, right? So you're a little bit more tipped into your toes, then back to the middle, and then let yourself just tip a little bit to the heels, just a little, of course, be careful. And then middle, toes. The only way to accomplish this movement correctly is to move from your middle. You have to relax the body and then just let yourself gently fall forward a little bit. And then let yourself kind of fall back to the middle and then fall back to the heels. Now, something else I've noticed, keep doing this a couple more times. I've noticed this with people dealing with Parkinson's, but also just people whose balance is, is off in general. There's a sort of fear to going this way. So what that creates is a constant state of back. And then there's always this threat to falling backwards. Everywhere people are going, they're staying sort of back, right? So we want to free up our ability to move forward and back, not sloppy, you know, but also loose. You got to be loose. All right, now find your way back to middle. From here, body weight change to your right leg and let that leg be soft and, and have a little bend in it to take the weight. Notice your other foot is empty. Lift the heel of this foot and get up to the tippy toe. Your chair is there if you need it, right? Then put that whole foot back down. And then let's just casually lean the weight or tilt the weight or flow the weight or pour the weight down through the left leg, right foot empty, get up to your tippy toe. Put the whole foot down and then change. Casual, easy. Feel that separation to where one is full, the other empty, and get to the tippy toe again. And put the foot down and pour the weight. Let it arrive down to the earth through your left leg, right foot now being a little empty, get to the tippy toe. Down, this is level one of this first exercise. Tippy toe, down, change. Once more, down. Now we go to level two. You might need hand on chair for this one. Get to the tippy toe and then disconnect the toe from the floor. Again, that's where your chair might be necessary. Lower the whole foot down without letting the body weight go into the leg. That's key. So that the change of weight is happening in this internal mechanism in your belly, low back, and quad. Then the free leg, tippy toe, disconnect, place it back down without any weight. And then from this internal mechanism, you change from the quad, belly, and lower back. Then the other leg is empty, so you can go tippy toe, disconnect, reconnect, change. Once you got full empty, lift, lower, change. This is the essential skill for anything you want to do, especially in terms of moving around, moving upstairs, downstairs, being very clear on full empty while keeping jung jung, your central upright. Now let's go level three. The next time you lift, you just see, can you get that knee all the way up and all the way down without any weight in it? Chain. Once you got that empty leg, float it, lower it, change. 
soft. How relaxed can you be? That's the challenge. And if you do it with this relaxation, it moves you in the direction of more relaxed, more ease. Casual yet precise. All right, next exercise. Change your weight to your left leg, put your right foot in front, heel touching very lightly, like so. Notice I didn't take a huge step. Just a small, comfortable step. Now, change the weight into that front leg and get to the tippy toe of your back leg. And then change your weight into your back leg, get to the tip of the heel of that front foot. So again, now we're all facing forward. Your chair is on your right. Change. Now, the important thing is this primary direction is not forward and backward even though we're moving forwards and backwards. The primary direction is down to the earth. And then the primary direction is down to the earth. And it just so happens that I got to move forward because of the arrangement of the feet, but the direction is down and down. And if the direction is down, that means any amount of you holding, 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 holding is keeping you from truly getting that down through. Down through. Now, come into that back leg. So you're in your left leg, right foot is empty. Use chair as needed. But now from the hip, lift, lower, shift. Once you're down through that right leg, left leg is empty, bend the knee, heel towards butt, toe back to the floor with no weight, shift. Front leg from the hip, lift, lower, shift. Back leg, knee bend, toe down, shift. The teacup sitting on your head is undisturbed if you've got Jong Jung or central line, central upright, and you're relaxing out, extraneous effort. Easy. That's level two. Let's do level three. Hand on chair as needed. Knee up. Heel softly touch down. Change the weight. Now that you're in your right leg, left leg, heel to butt and knee up forward and then toe back, shift. Up, down, shift. Forward and up, toe back, shift. Up, down, shift. So anytime you falter while doing this, usually it's because you didn't truly separate and connect down through to the earth correctly and then connect down. So we emphasize not the lifting leg, but the relationship to the earth through that standing leg. And if you do that, everything else kind of opens up and becomes easier, more accessible. Now, bring your right foot back, change the weight to the right, sidestep near this chair. Put the weight in your right leg, put left foot in front, heel touching, level one. Just rock, 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 rock. Remember, primary direction is down. Down, and that doesn't mean pushing down, let's say with effort, it means yielding, letting go, relaxing. Usually when we think of relaxing, we kind of get a little sloppy. We kind of go, oh, relax, and we lose our integrity. So that's where that jong jung becomes so important. Don't lose your integrity, but do release everything. Relax everything. Now, level two. So as you come back into your right leg, left leg from the hip, little lift, lower, shift. 
Then this back leg like a flamingo, just bend the knee, toe down, shift. Again, from the hip, lift, lower, shift. So again, this back leg, it's behind, right? So notice I didn't bring my knee forward. I'm not doing this yet. I'm just working on this movement here, okay? So that's that flamingo, lift, touch, shift back. And then this, there's no bend of the knee. It's just this emptying or sitting of the hip and leg down, shift. And then it's just the knee, flamingo, down, shift. So make sure your left foot is in front. Make sure your left foot is in front here and you're shifting into the left, moving forward, flamingo the right foot, and then put it back down behind you, and then shift, and then this front leg, hip, down, shift, and then bend. <clears throat> now, level three, may uh, use chair as needed, up, softly down with the heel, change the body weight. Make sure the whole movement of this right leg, forward and up and back, occurs without any change of weight. It stays empty because the weight's here. Then we shift. Then it's up, down, shift. And some of you might, who've been practicing for a little while now, you might start to see swiftness. Meaning, if this is truly empty, then I can go like that pretty fast, but not because I'm rushing or working harder. Same thing here. I might be able to just go because of its emptiness, its looseness. So keep in mind that even though we're starting slow and controlled, it leads us towards swift, precise movement. Last one. Up. Down. <clears throat> shift all right switching sides again left foot comes back change the weight to the left step out move, move closer to your right side chair now weight into your left leg right foot out heel touching soft now shift into your right leg left foot should be on the tippy toe empty just swing it forward and take one step in front heel touching not a big step Right, again, not a huge step. And then shift into that uh, left leg, it should be. So now your right foot is in. So now we're getting two changes. So go now back down through your right leg, step your left foot back with the toe, empty leg, shift back. Now you're empty again in the right. So from our middle pivot, we're getting change to the right leg, change to the left leg, and then change again, and then change again. So that's what you want to focus on. Loose and relax. Now, down through your right leg, step your left foot, it's empty. Change down through your left leg, get to where your right foot is empty. Then go down through the right, left empty, it can step. And then back. So again, we're now traveling a decent amount forward and backwards, but we're still only thinking down, down. Anything other than that down quality risks us tipping too far forward, too far back, throwing our, you know, kind of rocking the boat. Whereas we're looking for this center to stay almost still. Like the central pivot of a seesaw that allows free movement, free, empty, full, free, empty, full, but this is undisturbed. Level two, use chair as needed. Lift, lower, shift. Now your back leg, imagine you had to pick your foot up and step over something. So that shows up in life as well. We have to pick the foot up and step and then shift. And then we got flamingo, just bend the knee, put the toe down, and now we go backwards. Primary direction down. That allows you the freedom to pick up your left foot, step it over that obstacle, down. And now it's lift, lower, down. 
Step over the obstacle. Down. Flamingo. Down. And down. Over the obstacle. The leg has to come up, tuck, and reach back without changing the weight. Down. Lift. Lower. Down. Focus on your middle pivot. What we're really seeking, according to the Tai Chi paradigm, is this middle pivot. Right? That's the, the free, loose body opening up around this middle pivot is what gives us what we're looking for in terms of agility, balance, stability, all of it. Level three, this leg up, down, shift, this leg, heel to butt, knee up, foot out, lower down that heel, shift, bring this right knee forward and up, reach the toe back, shift, then this leg up, tuck the foot, reach, no body weight, and then shift, knee up, down, shift. This one, heel to butt, we're just kind of exaggerating, clearing the range of motion without disturbing pelvis and spine. Shift, then knee up, toe back, shift, up, tuck, reach without any weight, and shift. One more, level three. Up, down, shift. Exaggerated bicycle. Shift, middle pivot. That's your primary place you're paying attention. This middle pivot. And Switching sides. Side step, get closer to other chair. Put the weight in your right leg, left foot in front, level one, casual. Change the weight once your right foot's empty, step it while it's still empty. Shift, get to the tippy toe. Now, weight goes down through left leg, right foot empty, step, shift. And forward, shift, step, shift, tippy toe, shift, step, shift, middle pivot. That's all you're concerned with. It's the only place you put your attention is this idea that there's this middle pivot from which everything is kind of crossing and neck. It's like a nexus point for all the structures, all the tissues. Belly and lower back are that place according to what the Taoists uh, discovered, you could say, through you know, many, many, many years of study. So it's worth us at least playing around with the idea that, oh, is there a middle pivot? And I, and I gotta relax to get there. Level two, leg lift, lower, shift. Remember, use chair as needed. Now, bend, step over a little obstacle, you know, a little low obstacle, shift, flamingo, lift, lower, shift back. This leg, up, tuck, reach back, shift. Same middle pivot idea. One full, one empty, change. The emptiness of the leg is what gives it the freedom to move, change. The emptiness gives it the freedom, Empty it so that it's free. You gotta fill one so the other is empty. Fill, empty. You get good at full empty, all of a sudden, walking, trotting, jogging, moving about the cabin, right, becomes possible. But it's this organization around the middle and the freedom of change and transformation, loose. Level three, use chair as needed, knee up, heel softly down, 
change, heel, knee, foot, lower the leg. And as that leg goes down, it didn't pull me with it, right? I'm, I'm practicing letting the leg go down and retaining all my organization. And then I change. Same thing here. I'm bringing this up and reaching it back, but I'm not getting pulled along for the ride, I'm not falling back into that leg. I'm reaching the foot, no weight, then change. Same thing here, up, tuck, reach. Don't get pulled along with it. Stay where you are, then change. Up, down, change. Exaggerated bicycle movement. When the leg goes down, don't get pulled with it. Change. Same thing. Here and back, no change. And then we change. Up, tuck, reach. Change. One more. Loose. Not afraid of the ground. Connecting to the ground releasing everything that can be released to the ground. And then what's left is Qing Ling, light, nimble, and free. And together. Now, you guys just stay as you are. I'm adjusting this my own space. So you just stay right as you are. You don't do anything different. So now I'm the same as you, right? I'm facing this way. Move to the left side of your space, turn and face across. So you have a big runway all the way in front. Your chairs should be to your left so that as we walk this way, you have something that could keep you safe if needed, right? So you got this. Now, empty your left foot, put it in front. Now just casually walk that way. Shift, once the foot is empty, let it swing forward. Shift, swing, shift, shift, step, shift. When you get to the end of your runway, we go backwards. Be careful going backwards. Make sure you're 100% full in one leg. You step your empty foot and keep it empty and just touch with the toe. And then shift, empty foot steps behind, toe touching, then you shift, step the empty foot, shift, step the empty foot, shift, shift. So that's level one, let's do another level one. Can you make it super casual? You might even add that swing of the arms. Opposite arm to leg. Right. Loose arms, easy, natural, relax. Let's do that again. Around your central pivot, these limbs are free to swing. Now, let's do level two. Empty foot up and over an obstacle, shift. Then up and over an obstacle, shift. Up and over, shift. Once you get to the end of your runway, go back. Shift back, be very careful here. So as you pick up the foot and reach it back, your goal is, can I step the toe to someplace on the floor and not have body weight already in the leg? And then I shift and establish a connection through one leg. Now that empty foot can go over the obstacle and not fall to the floor or uh, the body doesn't fall into the leg until you want it to flow right through Let's do one more of those. Some of you might decide level three, which is just each step a little more exaggerated. 
right? Which just adds the challenge of truly how empty is that leg? Because only if it's truly empty can it go through that whole range without pulling your body off center. And we reverse. And as you finish, stay to this end of your runway. Turn, face forward, put the weight through the right leg. Out, in, out, in. So this is a lateral movement. A couple of common mistakes that people make when practicing this is instead of this movement, which you can see my whole heel, my whole heel is on the ground and my leg is still in neutral rotation pointing forward. And so I'm just moving it laterally and opening and closing this quad. That's what we want. A lot of times people step out, turn the leg out and point the toe and then come back. And so that limits the, the cultivation of what we're looking for. So really work on almost like you're leading with the heel. And what you can feel there is this opening of the quad. So that's one of the best parts of this sidestepping exercise is open, close. Get that separation right here at this right side groin, inguinal crease and leg. Now keep the foot out there, change the weight. Now you're in the right leg, left leg is empty. You hopefully feel some opening of the quad. The other mistake people make is they lift this heel and then that limits the development of, of what we're looking for. So keep this heel down and let's change back and forth and try to find the ability to go from leg to leg, having nothing to do with your feet coming off the floor. So it's internal mechanisms, groin, belly, low back, and space, this claw space here being your ability to move athletically and change your weight. Now stay in your right leg, left leg should be empty, bring it in, out. Same rules apply, keeping the leg in a neutral rotation and leading somewhat from the heel of that foot. Then bring it in, keep it in as close together as you can, touching if possible, because this is a very unstable position. And then we practice change the weight to your left leg, let it go down through, right foot could be empty, should be empty. And then change, left foot empty, change, right foot empty. If you find and operate from this internal mechanism, then you're able to keep a safe, upright body while creating this empty full change, which then frees you to step, walk, run, do whatever. Now, right leg empty, side step, shift. Left leg empty, bring it in, shift. Right leg empty, out, shift. Left leg empty, in, shift. Out, shift, in, shift. One more, out, shift. Let's go back the way we came. So go in, out, shift, bring it in, shift, out, shift. Middle pivot is Balance, the teacup on our head is undisturbed, yet we're changing, 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 changing. Now we're gonna do that again and we're gonna add just the simplest Tai Chi movement. And if you've been coming to our Friday class, you know this one, the bear washes its paws in the stream. So step your right foot out, have your hands over to the left of you and your belly button turned a little bit to the left. Now, as you shift into your right leg, wash your paws. They sweep across. The belly turns, right? The body turns a little. 
to this right side. Now bring the left foot in, keep the left foot in. As you change your weight to your left leg, turn, wash your palms. Step the right foot out, shift and turn, wash your palms. Step left foot in, shift into that left leg, turn, wash your paws. Step right foot out. Washing across, bring it in. Step. Wash. Loose joints, yet no disturbance to your equilibrium. Even though now we're adding rotation, let's go back. Wash. Step in. Change, turn. Step out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Now, play with clouds. Stepping out. One cloud, one sweep. As you step in, the hands change. One up, one down. Shift into your left leg, turn, cloud lake. Vapor and rain as you step out. Shift and turn, cloud lake. Vapor and rain stepping in. Cloud lake. Vapor rain step out. Cloud lake. Cloud leg, step out. One more. Now we go back the way we came. Bring the foot in, out. Step in as you vapor and rain. The weight change and the turn from the middle pivot all together. And then as the hands are changing, I'm stepping with no body weight. So this leg is empty so that I can shift and turn. So all that together, the weight is going into the leg. The turn is happening from the middle pivot and the hands are loose and alive. And then the same thing here, I step in, but the foot is empty. And then it's change, turn. As the vapor and rain happens, I step out, I prepare, and then, and then step in and prepare, and then shift, turn, and across. So there's really just two events, the vapor, rain, and step, and then all of this, the weight change, the turn, and the hands all flow together. And then the stepping in and the hand change happen, and then change, turn, sweep. And last time, out and across. And then bring those hands down, wash your paws back to middle, shogun, up and over, settle down to the middle. Hands come down, move over uh, to the middle here, right in between your chairs. Empty your right leg by letting the left leg be your one support leg. Right foot empty, turn it out, turn it back to neutral, turn it in. Neutral, out. When you turn it out, also let the hips turn a little, chest turn a little, head turn a little. Like you're arranging yourself to pay attention to what's over here. And then back to neutral, you're paying attention straight ahead. And then here, when you turn, let the hips turn a little bit. Your left claw should close, right? There should be a closing feeling there. And you're able to arrange your awareness to this left corner. But your weight is still pretty much in this left leg. Now turn out to the right. So let's skip neutral, turn. Skip neutral, turn in. So the freedom of the pelvis and the leg and the spine while we have one nice solid support leg. And back to neutral, let's switch. So put the weight down through your right leg, 
Left leg is empty. Turn left leg out with a slight turn of the pelvis and the awareness. And then turn across and close. And try to look over this way. And then turn open. And close. And so what we're adding is not just the idea that, okay, my leg bone is external and internal, which yes, it is, but we're also allowing the freedom of the hips to turn a little bit to the left and the shoulders and spine and head and everything to kind of rotate that way. And then that they can rotate all the way the other way to where you can even look over your shoulder a little bit. And then again, we turn out. And we turn, look in. Okay, back to neutral. Change the weight to your left leg. Right leg turn out, body turns out a little bit. Now shift into your right leg, bring the left foot to match your right foot. Now we're facing the right side of the room. Do that again, right foot empty. Turn it out, let the body turn a little bit and then shift and bring everything together so you're back to neutral. So you should now be facing away from the camera if you did it correctly. Then you turn the right foot out again, so it's the right foot each time. Shift and turn the body, now you're facing to what was the left side. And then turn your right foot out one final time, shift, turn, now you're facing forward again if you've done it with me. You'll be facing straight ahead. Let's go around again. So right foot empty, turn out, the body kind of turns with it. And then you just shift and bring the left foot to match. Empty the right foot again, turn, turn the body. And then shift, bring the foot to match. So again, we're adding, because when we first did this, we just focused on the leg. But now we're adding the freedom of the pelvis, the freedom of the, the hips to move to where the spine and everything changes, and then we're bringing everything together. That's freedom. Now we'll go to the left. So turn, shift, bring the right foot to match. Empty the left foot, turn, shift, everything comes to match. Empty left foot, turn it out, turn the body, shift, bring everything to match. So we're feeling the freedom that gets created when you do things in the proper order. Jong Jung, you have a central upright. You don't want to lose it. Chun Wan, you relax everything to the earth and you allow that full empty to happen. One leg, everything goes through to the earth. Everything through to the earth, right? And then Ching Ling, light nimble and easy. Now, empty your right leg. Instead of turning out, let's do this one. Turn in, have yourself already arranged, looking to this corner, and then shift into your right leg, bring your left foot to match it. So now you're facing to your right. And then do that again. Empty right foot. You pigeon toe it and turn and relate. Now you should be facing kind of away from the camera. And then shift into your right leg, bring your left foot to match. Again, empty the right foot, pigeon toe, and turn the body, and then shift. And empty that right foot, pigeon toe, shift. Let's go around again. So it's the quad. Really feel how the quad, you're closing the left quad and the right quad here, creating this little pinched position, and then coming to neutral quad, neutral groin. Then you're closing right in this groin area, and then neutral. Closing, neutral. Closing, neutral. Let's do it the other way. Closing, body turning, and then neutral. Close, neutral. Neutral, relax as can be, totally at ease. Just moving the body through space using hydraulics, using loose liquid freedom rather than 
tensing up and trying to yank your body around, which is what most people are doing. Very disadvantageous over time. And then we'll finish putting those two together. Watch me once if you've never seen it before. So it's one turn out. Then as I'm shifting here, I don't just bring this left foot parallel, I turn it in. So now I'm in two foot movements facing 180 degrees. And then I do that two more foot movements. One turning out, shift, and one turning in. And then I'm back to facing forward. So let's do that together. So claw opening, both claw opening, shifting, coming through neutral to both claw closing, pinched closed. And then shift and both claw opening. And then shift and both claw closing. Both opening, shift. Both closing, opening, right? shift, close, and then back to neutral, and let's go the other way. So now left leg turn out, both quad opening, and then shift on the left leg turning, both quad closing because you pigeon toe that right foot. And then shift and open both quad, shift, close both, shift, open, shift, close, shift, open, shift, close, go around one more time, picture your teacup. Undisturbed teacup because everything's relaxed down through to the earth, your Jung Jung intact, and we're back to neutral facing forward, hands together, rub, rub the back of one hand, then the palms, back of other hand, palms. Then hands on the quad. That area can get a little stagnant, stuck, and sore when we use it through our Tai Chi, so be clear. Then hip flexors. Then come around the sacrum, uh, the hips to the sacrum, the tail, up, up onto your lower back muscles. And then, like we did our squat, sit the butt, sweep the hands down the outside of the legs, around to the inside, stand up, come up past the groin to the navel. Qua, hip flexors, <clears throat> sacrum, lumbar, known as the gate of life, Ming Men, and then sitting, sweeping down the legs around to the inside and up to the navel last time. Qua, hips to sacrum, lumbar, and To the navel, and then we go up the outside of one arm to the shoulder, turn that arm palm up, sweep down and off the fingertips, and we repeat on the same arm, turn that arm palm down, up, turn, down, turn, up, turn, down, up, down, up, down. and switch, up, down. Up, down. And bounce. Shake out all the final bits of debris. And show them. and seal the practice. You got belly button, center of palm, one and two. Relax everything, release, 
Three nice long breaths in the nose. Hold out the nose or the mouth. And the Taoist bow. Thank you so much, everybody. Make sure you know where your chair is when you try to sit down. And if there are any final quick questions or anything, feel free, unmute yourself and, uh, and let me know what you got. Any insights, anything like that.